Welcome to Clutter to Clarity, the podcast where we transform chaos into calm. I'm your host, Heather Ann, and I'm here to guide you to a more intentional and clutter-free life. Whether you need help decluttering your physical space or seeking clarity in your mindset, each episode is packed with expert tips, personal insights, and inspiring stories. So grab your favorite beverage, get cozy, and let's dive into another episode of Clutter to Clarity. Hello, and welcome to episode three of Clutter to Clarity. I am your host, Heather Ann, and today I will be sharing seven tips for creating a tidy and welcoming entryway. So the entryway of our house is keeping it tidy is one of the fastest ways to make our home appear decluttered, (laughs) even if we still have a lot of decluttering to do in hidden places, that first spot where you walk through the door uh, is going to be beneficial to you because you're going to walk into your space and it's going to feel under control and be peaceful in that regard. Uh, Also, if you have friends over, when they walk in, you will feel better not feeling like your entryway is a big cluttered mess. Now, I will tell you, Most people do not see the clutter the way we see the clutter on our own space, but still be less of a panic if you have unexpected guests drop in if your entryway is decluttered. However, on the flip side of that is also one of the more challenging places to keep tidy because it's where we come into our home and sort of dump everything when we get home. And it's where we store things so that we remember to take them out of the house whenever we leave. So it is both a great place to keep tidy and also one of the more challenging places to keep tidy. So today I've got seven tips for how to kind of helpfully keep that area a little uh, tidier and therefore more welcoming both to you and to your guests. Tip number one, corral the shoes. If you are like many people and science is continuing to prove that it's a good idea and take off your shoes when you come in the house so you do not track the outside in, that means shoes get cluttered up everywhere around your door. I would say one of the big things on corralling your shoes is avoid those shoe racks that have the individual slots for each shoe or each pair of shoes. When you're in a hurry, and if you have children, nobody's going to put their stuff in those. (laughs) And then they're just going to get piled up. And then when you go to put them away, um, often the cubbies have then been filled with something else. I would recommend baskets, like a basket for each family member or cubbies. We have a bench that has cubbies and each family member has their cubby that they put their shoes in. You don't have to worry about putting them in there tidy. You just can cram them in your cubby and then they're not on the floor. They're not piled up. People aren't tripping on them. They look relatively tidy whether you can see in the cubby or not just because they are contained. So corral those shoes. Tip number two, go vertical. We don't have to have everything stored on the floor or in a cabinet. Um, Go with either a good old-fashioned coat tree. If you can still find an antique one, those are beautiful. We have a rack that my husband has made with a piece of wood and a whole bunch of really pretty hooks and backpacks, coats, the bag that library books go into to be taken back to the library. Those all go on those hooks. So then they're off the floor. They are contained. Nobody's, again, tripping on them. Your coats aren't getting dirty because they're on the floor. The backpacks aren't spilling out because they're laying down likely unzipped because children go vertical. Tip number three, create a paper processing station. So setting the station up near where mail and paperwork comes into the house is very helpful at keeping paperwork at bay. What I have at my personal station is I have a trash can, a recycling basket, and a paper shredder. So as soon as the mail comes in, I open all the envelopes, recycle all the envelopes, toss any plastic wrappers, anything like that into the trash can and all of those credit card offers, no matter how many times I put my name on a list to not receive them, we still receive them. All those credit card offers go in the shredder just in case they have any information that could be used by someone wanting to steal our identity and any other things that need to be shredded. Then Just the very few items that actually need to be dealt with go back to my desk and get put in the inbox there to be dealt with. That's tip number three, create a paper processing station. Tip number four, designate a schoolwork inbox for each child. 
So choose an easy to use container so that each child, when they come in, all of their artwork, all of the papers in their backpack, all of that should get dumped into their inbox each day when they come in from school. You could do a quick sort each day to make sure nothing needs to be dealt with by the next day. But for the most part, those papers can be dealt with weekly um, and make it kind of a fun thing. Make a paper party with your child, with each child. Go through the paperwork with them. Let them tell you the story of what was this homework about or what is this piece of artwork about and then choose together a few things to keep in terms of artwork or special worksheets and recycle the rest and make it a little event with your child. Not only do you then get to spend that time with your child learning about the things that they've brought home from school, but you're also starting to model for them how to thoughtfully deal with paperwork and not let it pile up. Tip number four, designating a schoolwork inbox for each child. Tip number five, establish a keys water wallet system. So first of all, choose a designated place for those things you walk in the house with and you're gonna need to walk out of the house with but you are not going to need them while you're in the house. Things like your keys, your wallets, your purses, your water bottles, your sunglasses. Always put those things away in those designated spots just as soon as you walk in the door. Therefore, that spot should be kind of close to where the door is. So when you walk in, all of those things get put away right away. And then when you walk out, <laughs> A, they're where they belong. And then in addition to that, I kind of have like in my head, the things that I need to walk out of the house with. So I need my water, wallet, keys, sunglasses, and oh gosh, right now I'm not, well, oh, masks. So for, for a long time, masks was included in that. Now I don't worry about it as much. I, I have one in each car on the rare event that I go someplace that I do need a mask, but just kind of creating a little mental checklist for yourself. I actually physically think about where on the body those things are, and I'll sort of almost head, shoulders, knees, and toes. Where are the things that I need to walk out the door with? But if you're always putting them away in that spot right when you walk out the door, even if you don't have that mental checklist that you go through, you can see the things you need to walk out the door with. So tip number four, establish a Keys water wallet system and always put those things away when you walk in the door. Tip number six, deal with packaging immediately. We, like probably most families in America, get a lot of packages all through the week, almost every day. Uh, we do a lot of online ordering. It's more convenient. Uh, it's, it takes less time. I put the packages on. We have a counter at, right as you walk in the front door, but I never open a package until I am also ready to deal with the packaging so that I don't wind up having packaging piling up because that can really also make a massive clutter at your entryway. I will dispose of any plastic nailers. I will recycle the air pillows. I will break down the boxes and take them to my recycling bin immediately. Even if I am super excited about what's arriving, I won't let myself open the package until I'm also going to deal with the packaging because it can pile up quickly. So tip number six, deal with that packaging immediately. Tip number seven, add some personal touches, right? Our front entryway should not be only utilitarian with a place for shoes and a place for backpacks and a place for keys and a place for mail. Add some things that make you smile when you walk in. Add a welcome mat that's either pretty or humorous and entertains you. Add some flowers or a mirror is a great place to put on the wall in your entryway so that you can check yourself as you leave or check yourself as you get home or give yourself your little morning affirmations before you greet the day. Obviously be careful with cluttering the space with too much decor, but a few items that make you smile, that make you feel welcome, that make you feel home really can make a difference in that welcoming aspect of your entryway. So tip number seven, add a few personal touches to your entryway. As I've said before, small consistent actions add up to big changes. Don't try to tackle all seven of these tips at <laughs> one time. Implement one tip at a time. Which one of these seven tips can you commit to doing consistently over the next few weeks? Give that time to stick into a new habit. And then once you've got that one, pick up another one and add that one to your list of habits to work on keeping your entryway 
tidy and welcoming. Even once you get all of these things done and your entryway is done, unfortunately decluttering is just not one of those one and done things because we continue to live our lives and exist in our spaces. Once you have your entryway organized, make sure that you do schedule regular tidy ups to keep it organized because even with these systems in place, things can get away with you, especially if you live with other people who are adding on to things for you. That's what I have for you today. Seven tips for creating a tidy and welcoming entryway. I appreciate you being here and I look forward to sharing with you more on the next episode of Clutter to Clarity. Before I wrap up today's episode of Clutter to Clarity, I'd love to ask for your support. If you've enjoyed the tips, insights, and stories shared here, please take a moment to rate and review the show on your favorite podcast platform. Your feedback helps me reach more listeners and continue providing valuable content. Thank you for being a part of the Clutter to Clarity community. And until next time, remember small consistent actions add up to big changes. Declutter your life today.